Hi there, Tracy from Kazadan's Equestrian and welcome to this week's video. This week I'm going to take a look, a high level look and explanation of string halt and what that is. Um, I'd like to have a special mention for a friend and client of mine, Emmy, who's allowed me to share her videos and photos of Millie, her horse who had gone through Australian string halt. So before you see the videos that are included in this video and get concerned about Millie, Millie did end up through great care by Emmy to return to 100% and also return to having a ridden career. So what is string halt? It's a nerve condition that causes a very distinctive and abnormal gait. It's very much a jerking up of legs, almost as if there's a puppeteer with strings attached to the legs of the horse and making the legs jerk up and halt for an amount of time before they move on again. It is very characteristic. Although when you look at this simply, it looks like it's a muscular thing, it is actually a nerve condition. So the muscular contractions that you see are a consequence of the problems occurring with the nerve. And this actually doesn't only occur in horses, it's actually been well documented in other hooved animals as well. So this particular nerve damage actually causes damage to the sensory receptors in the nerves that determine the shortening or lengthening of muscles. So these sensory receptors determine whether the muscle length is gone shorter or longer. And as this is now, I guess, a faulty circuit, the muscles then contract and relax at the wrong times compared to the movement of the horse. These muscles obviously then contract either too early or too late and really form this characteristic gait. It is easy to see, but when it if it comes on slowly and you see a little bit of that, it's sometimes easy to um, notice more. If you back your horse up or turn it around in a circle, the horse will find this very, very difficult. String halt may affect either one leg or both legs. And there are two types of string halt. There is Australian string halt. This sort of string halt is thought to be through a flatweed and a toxin in the flatweed. This then causes changes to those nerve receptors. Now, this can be temporary and it can be as short-lived as months to as long-term as years, but there can be a recovery from this. What is referred to as classic string halt is not due to this plant toxin. It can be an injury or, or an unknown cause. And the prognosis for this isn't quite as good as the prognosis for a horse with Australian string halt. So as mentioned, Australian string halt is thought to be the toxins in a flatweed. And the name of the plant, which I'm going to mispronounce, I'm sure, is Hypercarious radicata. So this is a specific um, weed that we have mainly in South, Southeast Australia, and it's also called a false dandelion. Most cases then seem to occur, of Australian string halt, seem to occur um, after long dry periods. So end of summer in autumn is when we start to see Australian string halt symptoms appear. These weeds also appear after these long dry periods in sort of poor and unfertilized soil. So you're not getting the growth of any other grasses. And so this weed can then become prolific. Although it's called Australian string halt, it's actually been diagnosed in many other countries as well because this weed is not particular to Australia. There have been so many studies trying to work out what is it in this weed that is causing the string halt in horses. For quite a while, it was thought that it was uh, mycotoxins, but these studies are now starting to reveal it does look more as if it is a toxin within the plant itself. These tests have taken samples of the plants um, from where horses have been diagnosed, and they're actually looking for the fungal toxins 
and were not able to find any. There was certainly nothing that was different to when horses were not getting string halts. So this has really thrown the theory of it being a mycotoxin up in the air quite a lot. It's not uncommon for people whose horses have recently been diagnosed with Australian string halt to lean towards a mycotoxin binder. Now, often this comes from advice on the internet or um, friends, etc. There's There has been anecdotal evidence, but this is really hard to quantify. But these studies have actually shown that the mycotoxin binders are unlikely to be the cause of the rehabilitation of a horse with Australian string halt because they have not been able to find these toxins in that plant. But the studies have genuinely shown that um, the mycotoxins are very unlikely to be the cause of Australian string halt. So what do we do then with that horse? A couple of really simple things. Call your vet. Um, first, your horse will need to be observed by a vet and monitored by a vet and get that horse off of the paddock it's currently in. You need to remove the pasture as first, first thing to do if you notice any symptoms of string halt at all. One of the other symptoms that can occur with Australian string halt is in, um, some, some nerve damage, I guess, to their vocal cords because when they try to whinny, sometimes they actually emit a roar, which is quite unusual. So again, Australian string halt can be resolvable with veterinary care, with um, dietary care and changing pasture. The recovery time can be anywhere from, you know, four, six, nine months, which is actually a very short recovery for string halt, to years. And sadly, if your horse is showing signs in the front legs as well as the back legs, the prognosis isn't quite so good for these horses. So are you looking at um, toxic or Australian string halt or are you looking at classic string halt? One of the ways to know is one, if your horse isn't on pasture, it occurred suddenly and is stronger in one leg or the other, it's actually likely to be classic string halt. This could be caused by a, a head injury, a neck injury, a back injury, um, but normally the cause is unknown. And unless there's an obvious injury, it is really hard to determine um, why the onset of classic string halt occurred. And sadly, again, the prognosis for horses with classic string halt seem to be um, not as favourable as the ones with Australian string halt because you can remove the cause. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this interesting. And if you have, please don't forget to click like, leave a comment on whether you've liked the video or not on the YouTube, um, subscribe to the channel, share it around, and I will see you next week.